recover the fumble. A very sloppy beginning to the second half of play. But the good news is, Bob, we haven't had to uh, call on the uh, technical director. You're talking about instant replay? Uh, well, you said you said the two magical words. And let, let me say this about instant replay. I'm glad that instant replay is in the Big Ten, and in particular for a this with so much riding. And I know there's a lot of different opinion out there, but I am a big proponent of instant replay. And I give credit to the Big Ten and Jim Delaney for being progressive and stepping out there and doing it. It's a lot of courage to go against the status quo. Take a chance. We're going to call interference against Purdue on the catch. Kick catch interference, non contact on the kicking team. 10 yards, first down. And move the ball all the way up to the 38 yard line. And Mark, that was pretty descriptive right there. He's saying that right there, there was interference by Hickman that impeded Jim Leonard from catching that football even though there was no contact. Now we get a look at it, and I rate Joe Tiller. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, the initial look at Erasmus James' left ankle does not look good. He has been walking up and down the sideline trying to shake off a sprain. But right now, he keeps shaking his head as if he cannot go. They're going to put him up on the table, try to retape it, and see if that gives him a little bit more stability. But, guys, not looking good so far for Erasmus James. I'll keep you posted. All right, Holly, and we'll see as he gets a chance to recuperate his offense on the team. As Anthony Davis is brought down right at the line of scrimmage by Wichiku. Mark, we're going to get a holding penalty against Wisconsin as we look at Erasmus James over on the sideline. James, as we told you, the last year had a hip injury, missed all season, thought his career might be over, saw the New York Giants team doctor in New York and got the proper therapy, came back to play. Another flag down at the 40-yard line. Mark, we need to pick the tempo up on these penalties. No Open. doubt. Holding. Offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Remains first down. Mark, let's go back and look at Erasmus James right here. You're going to see Charles Davis, the tight end. I believe right there come late on him and chop him. That is a legal block. I was going to ask you that. It is legal. And to be quite honest. Why? Wisconsin's coaches were upset coming into this game about Purdue chop blocking at the line of scrimmage. As long as you're inside the tight end box, Mark, okay. you are allowed to chop and block below the waist as long as there's not another player engaged with the player that is being chopped. So if an individual player chops another player inside the tight end box, that's perfectly legal. Now, was that called for? Was that necessary? Maybe not, but legal. But Mark, the slow tempo of how long it takes to administer the penalties yeah. in this game is becoming obvious right now. This is Wisconsin's first possession of the second half. First down and 20, Anthony Davis stopped up at the line of scrimmage at the 29 by Ray Edwards. And Bob, as you mentioned, the tempo of the game, it still, you would think, favors Wisconsin. No question about that, Mark, but it's tough on offense tough period in a football game even for us to get some yeah. kind of rhythm going yeah. as long as this, these penalties have taken to be administrated. Mark again we're going to go back and look at this Charles Davis right here the tight end on the back side right here. Once again that's legal if he doesn't chop block Erasmus James an athlete like Erasmus James will come in that back door and make the play so I'm not second guess that technique at all. On second and long, 19 to go. It's Stocko completes to the 45 to Brandon Williams. Brandon Williams out of Hazelwood East High School in St. Louis, a school that has sent a lot of players to Wisconsin, a 15-yard pickup. And Mark, what you have to question right here is why does Brandon Williams go down to the ground after catching this football? Right here, I mean, look at the open space to run after the catch. I don't know that he needed to go down and... and, and, and uh, take himself out of that play, Mark, but again, it sets up a third down and four. Stock away of 18. Purdue coming with pressure. A blitz on its way. And it's incomplete. Intended for Jonathan Orange. Stocko just missed him. He got him behind Hickman. The 
again. Brock Spack heats him up, Mark, with the safety blitz. Cal Smith, number seven, a converted quarterback. Now the starting safety. You're going to see late right there, Cal Smith on the safety blitz. Fourth down and four. The Bush with his fifth punt of the night. Jake Cunningham calls for the fair catch. Time to the 17. And the Purdue fans looking for a little payback in the form of a penalty after that 38-yard punt. The alumni out there in the stands getting a little bit salty. They want the team to get with the program. Orton on the field when we come back. What were we thinking about when we gave the Kia Sedona a powerful standard engine? What were we thinking about when we gave it such a great warranty and priced it thousands less than our competitors? What were we thinking about when we designed it to get the government's highest safety rating? What were we thinking? We were thinking about Scotty, Nanny, Poppy, Uncle Larry, Derek, Eric, Dad, and Mr. Mophead. The always family-friendly Kia Sedona. Right now, get 2500 cash back on a Sedona. Assurance in rain means Goodyear's deeply carved aqua shoots propel water away from your tread. Assurance on ice means Goodyear's interlocking threads deliver gripping power. Assurance on dry pavement means Goodyear's reinforced shoulders give you confident maneuvering. The revolutionary new Goodyear Assurance with triple tread technology for assurance in any weather on the wings of Goodyear. Katie was sure of her cholesterol plan. She took medication, she ate right and ran. Yet it wasn't enough to get bad cholesterol low. What's this? I'm still here in the land of no. Switch to Crestor, her doctor said. You're not to blame. All cholesterol drugs simply aren't the same. When Crestor performed in a head-to-head -head test, its lowering effect was clearly the best. Crestor's proven effective. That's well understood. Would you like to try it? Why, yes. Yes, I would. Ask your doctor about Crestor. Crestor is not for everyone, including people with liver disease and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of serious side effects. Since Katie switched to Crestor, her cholesterol is much less. With Crestor and diet, it's the land of success. Get your free trial today, and you just might declare, I'm a Crestor success. Now you're getting somewhere. Wisconsin leading 7-0. Let's go downstairs to Holly. So, guys, Erasmus James is going to give it a go. That left ankle was retaped. He's in a lot of pain. Just putting his shoe back on was great pain for him. He is out there limping around, but he took time to have a conversation with the umpire saying he wasn't happy about the chop block. I could read the umpire's lips. He said, there's nothing I can do about it. Obviously, it was a legal block, but the defensive front for Wisconsin right now complaining about those chop blocks. We'll see if Erasmus James... Uh, get his point across, but more importantly, if he's effective here on that bad angle. Well, his game has done the talking today. He has been the single most dominant force on the field this afternoon and tonight. First down and ten. Handed up inside to Gerard Boyd. Boyd still on his feet with a nice run. Out to the 26. Got about seven yards. It'll be second down and three. Scott starts making the stop. Mark, let's go back to Erasmus James because this is an amazing story. He's a guy that played one year of high school football. He was born in the West Indies. Barry knew this fall that Erasmus James was back and was going to be a huge success, but he kept it quiet so the media didn't start writing a bunch of things about him so nobody would double him early in the year. He wanted to kind of keep it in the back. Paid off, too. Here's the freshman. Orion Bryant with a first down out to the 33, and Brooks made the stop, and Erasmus James is going to limp off of the pitch. His fitness level, not where, obviously, it should be. Mark he seems very disappointed about it, very frustrated. Exactly, and keep in mind, they're now down two defensive ends with Jonathan Welsh and Erasmus James in this football game. Joe Monte, the other backup defensive end. So you have Jamal Cooper, number five, Mark, off at the top, and Joe Monte at the bottom. They're both second-team defensive ends. Both of them good players, but they're not Erasmus James and Jonathan Welsh. First down and 10, Orton fires incomplete, intended for Bryant, and a nice play by LeVon Rowan. Rasmus James on the sideline. Here's the last play, full speed. Marking at some point on a night like this, 
it's only going to get worse because it is cold here. If he has to go over and sit down a while, I don't know that he'll be back in this football game. David Owen, number 63, you saw him look back. He's the starting right tackle. He's had his hands full with the game. Boyd out beyond the 40 to the 41-yard line. About two yards shy of the first down, Cooper made the stop with Leonard. A seven-yard pickup by Gerard Boyd. Mark, interesting right there what Purdue did. Wisconsin doing so much disguising on defense. In other words, hiding their intentions that Purdue came up very quickly to the line of scrimmage and for the first time tonight went on the first snap count. In other words, they didn't allow Wisconsin to move around that time. Much easier to do on a running down. A little bit tougher on a passing down. Look up a third down and three. Get to the 44 for the first down. Orton looking to pull the trigger upfield. Incomplete and a flag throw. Intended for Stubblefield. Not sure that ball was catchable. I'm not sure that ball was catchable, and now Hawthorne is down on the field for the Badgers. Mark, a lot of things happening on this play. The first thing, Purdue keeps number 87, Charles Davis, in the tight end to block. Second thing, we're going to get a pass interference right there. I think that does have to be called. No question, Mark. You cannot say that's an uncatchable ball. The third thing, Antaj Hawthorne, number 77, goes down. You see Scott Starks right there. Definitely a good call. It'll be a first down and 10. They're going to spot the ball at the 45 of Wisconsin. Now Hawthorne comes out. That's three-fourths of their defensive front. And that starters on the bench. And that is three NFL players. We're going to look at Hawthorne after this play and see exactly how that happened. Here's Boyd on the handoff. Boyd still on his feet. Down to the 39-yard line. Tackled by Dante Sanders. Let's take one more look at that injury. Mark, let's, let's look at number 77, Hawthorne. He's in there at nose guard. I believe he's spin move right there. Yeah, I mean, he just on the spin move looked like he hurt himself. On this. They've got Ostrowski. They've got Barrett, Hayden, and backups. That's three NFL D linemen over here on that side. Not where you want them. Orton on the bootleg action. Has double field, but instead goes underneath to Davis. Complete at the 34-yard line and another Boilermaker first down, but they might have missed an opportunity there, Bob. Mark, you hit the nail on the head. They do get the first down. They do convert, but they had Kyle Orton wide open right here on the crossing route. I'm sorry. Taylor Stubblefield is going to come wide open on this crossing route right now. And right now, you see Stubblefield on the scramble drill, turn up field. They had an opportunity, Mark, to get a big one right there. He'll get the first down, though, at the 34-yard line. Davis, the tight end, improving as a player. And Mark, keeping Davis in a lot in the passing game. They run it. Boyd right between the tackles. Gerard Boyd with a nice run near another first down at the 23-yard line. Hey, Bob. Kind of ironic that you said they keep Davis in to block as a tight end, but you don't have the same guys with the pressure up front for Wisconsin. And Mark, that time in the running game, Charles Davis, number 87, he's the chop master. Watch him pull right here and low block and chop again, this time on the run. Watch. Boom. Davis having a big effect on this game with his blocking. He takes Joe Monty out, but once again, he's the chop doctor. It off once again to Boyd. Boyd brought down at the 20-yard line. About seven yards shy of the first down. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rose. Well, guys, right now it looks like a pretty good diagnosis for Antosh Hawthorne. They in looked at his right knee. They did all the ligament tests. It does not appear at this time to be a ligament injury. They're thinking it may be the top of his calf muscle that is causing him some pain. They had him do some pushing off. He looks like he is effective, and it looks like he's going to try to get back in this game, guys. All right, Holly, and this, meanwhile, is the most impressive drive of the night for Purdue offensively, the ninth play of the drive. You have to wonder if Purdue running the football a little bit more, Mark. That's something to do with three out of four of those linemen out of there. Play action, Charles Davis open. Complete to Davis. 
down to the 12-yard line and another first down. Charles Davis doing it with his blocking and now with his receiving skills. Mark, great call by Jim Chaney. This time they're going to come with the play action off the same running play they did on the prior play when Charles Davis chopped Joe Monty. Meanwhile, Hawthorne back into the ball game. His regular defensive tackle spot, first down and 10 for Purdue from the 12-yard line. Mark, in this formation right here with Charles Davis in the slot has become the number one formation on this drive. They give it to Boyd. Boyd got about three down to the nine-yard line, stopped by Hawthorne. Now, Bob, this is how good the Wisconsin defense has been this year. This is only the seventh time this season that was a Wisconsin opponent has entered the red zone. Imagine that. In all the games they've played, six games this that year. That is unbelievable. How about only giving up two touchdowns in six games and almost three quarters, Mark? Second down and seven. But Purdue threatening Ingram, the 6'9 receiver, good on the fade in this territory. They look the other way into the end zone. The Heisman Trophy winner of that drive, number 87, Charles Davis. Horton to Davis, and Davis's first touchdown catch of his career. Mark, he had a huge catch against Penn State last week for about 40 yards. Then Jones knocks through the extra point, and we are deadlocked at seven apiece. So for the first time in this game, the prolific Boilermaker offense rears its head. And Charles Davis, who did a job blocking and catching, takes it into the end zone with a nice grab. We'll be back with more right after this. Catch Major League Baseball's League Championship Series action live on ESPN Radio. Go to ESPNRadio.com to find the game time in your town. Get your radio on. Leon, free agent year, trade rumors. What's next for you? Well, actually, Joe, I'm uh, contemplating a career in broadcasting. Really? Since when? Since I saw your catering card. I see you working with the roast beef. You got your baby quiche. Glad you like it. I do. Let's get back to the trade room. So this is what you do, man? You just sit up here all day, eat sandwiches, watch the game, and repeat what you've seen in that microphone? No, it's a, it's a bit more complicated. How much they pay you for this gig? Go and tell me. Oh, forget about it then. Can a Kia Sorento make you feel more powerful? More secure? Give you more peace of mind? Can it make you more attractive, more successful, more popular, more witty at dinner? Maybe, maybe not. But you can definitely get the SUV you want and more cash in your pocket. Welcome to more. Right now, get $2,000 cash back plus a $2,000 competitive bonus on a Kia Sorento. People everywhere are experiencing a breakthrough. I'm full! Taco Bell's new Big Bell Value menu. Featuring the spicy chicken burrito with shredded chicken simmered in authentic Mexican spices. To keep your stomach and your wallet full, think outside the barn. Get ready to experience Hold on! the biggest event on DVD. Ah! The day after tomorrow. Own the DVD today. Now we'll be fine. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday Primetime. Brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. And Kia Motors. Kia, make every mile count. Welcome back, everyone, to a sold-out Ross H. Stadium here in West Lafayette. Kyle Orton to Charles Davis, and we are tied at 7 apiece. Ben Jones set to kick off, and... This homecoming crowd, for the first time tonight, pumping up the volume. Jones into a stiff wind. Down to the goal line, it's Brandon Williams. And Williams bottled up at the 21-yard line. 
Let's take a look at our Yamaha game track. Charles Davis with the touchdown moments ago. Orton really struggled in the first half, doing parts of that great rush led by Erasmus James, who's now out of the ball game. Then Davis breaks through for the first touchdown of the ball game to make it seven to nothing. And just a few moments ago, Bob Davis, Bob Davy, affectionately yeah. calling uh, hey. Charles Davis the chop doctor. I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that. Catching that touchdown pass. That was athletic, wasn't it? Sure was. I mean, the chop doctor's been on the ground a lot chopping. He went airborne that time, Mark. Out of Detroit, Michigan. Time for number 28. Put a big target on this guy right here, Mark. Taco hands it off to Anthony Davis. Davis met right in the hole by Bernard Pollard. Brock Spack said he's the best hitter Purdue has had since we've been here for eight years. There he is, Pollard, 31. Mark, he also said Pollard is really a linebacker playing defensive back. And watch him come up here. Started as a true freshman last year, and this is how you tackle right here. What? Boom. You don't see Anthony Davis get shot like that very many times. Second down and nine. This Boiler Nation's coming to life down here a little bit. Yeah, Boiler and up. Taco has time and fires. Pass is complete at the 40-yard line to Owen Daniels. Great catch. Let's go back to Matt Weiner in the studio. Hi, Mark. Boise State with the nation's longest win streak on the line, taking it to Tulsa tonight. Jared Zabransky going to take this one to the end zone. He's in from 14 and it's 14 nothing. All right, Matt, back here. First down and 10. After that Owen Daniels 17-yard reception. Taco working out of the shotgun. A flag down on the play. Taco going up top and is overthrown. Intended for Darren Charles. Well, we have seen a host of penalties here. Let's put the stopwatch on Steve Newman right now, the head referee. You know, he's picking the tempo up okay. a little bit right yeah, now. Right? He's been very deliberate. We were tonight. sluggish early in the third quarter. <laughs> with the rash of penalties. Come on, Steve, let's go. Let's mark it off and go now. The illegal formation, number 75, was not in the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined, second down. Wisconsin comes in at 6-0, 3-0 in conference play. Purdue, meanwhile, 5-0 overall and 2-0 in conference play. The winner of this game, you would figure, would have a definite leg up on the conference title. Wisconsin does not have to play Michigan this year. Meanwhile, Purdue gets Michigan next week at home here. Second and 10. Anthony Davis on the handoff, and Davis tackled immediately by Villarreal. He made a bunch of tackles tonight. It'll be third down and long, about nine to go for the Badgers now. Mark, you get the feeling with 3.05 left in the third quarter. This is a critical third down right now. Purdue's offense last year started to generate some momentum. It's important for them to get the football back right now. If you're Wisconsin, don't make a mistake right here, John Stocko. A three-receiver formation. Mark, you got a big, tall receiver up here. Charles at six foot six. Pressure coming. Stocko has a man complete. Now to the 34-yard line, Bob. That's exactly who he dialed up, Darren Charles. And got in behind Antoine Rogers for the first down. Mark, we saw last week Darren Charles four catches against Ohio State for 30 yards right here. They're in two deep, meaning the corner has the flat, the safety has the half, and there's a natural void right in behind that corner. Very precise throw by John Stocko. And now Booker Stanley in the ball game for Anthony Davis. The deep back out of the eye, Bernstein, the fullback. Mark, that was a huge third down conversion. There's Stanley. Down to the 29-yard line. Got a good block from Bernstein on the lead or the ISO play. And that's one of the benefits that Barry Alvarez has. He can bring in Booker Stanley to spell Anthony Davis this deep in the ball game, which gives Davis fresher legs. Good point, Mark. And let's go back earlier in the season. 
Bernstein, we look right here, the pullback, he was actually the tailback against Penn State, had over 100 yards rushing. All four tailbacks going into the season for Wisconsin injured early in the year, so they're finally starting to get healthy back there. Second down and six. Wisconsin trying to answer the Purdue touchdown on the last drive. Bernstein gets a touch down to the 26-yard line. Pollard making the stop with 1.42 to go now in the third period. Mark, you know again, when Brock Spack, the defensive coordinator, needs a play against the run, he is going to bring that strong safety. That's the strong safety right there. They're going to return his whole front into the boundary. He loves to bring that strong safety blitz from the field when they're in trouble. Once again, signature defense. Take it down to the 24. Keep your eye on Bernstein, number 45, Mark. This lead blocker right here. But there's Stanley, the deep back. Stocko passes complete at the 23-yard line to Tony Pichotti, the tight end. That's going to be near the first down marker. Depends on the spot. They give it to him. It's going to be first down intended. What a great job by John Stocko. Great job by Stocko, because, Mark, I want you to watch. Ray Edwards, number 10, right here, the defensive end, does a great job covering this boot pass. He is covered. But Stocko, just with great patience right here, comes out of here and stays with it. Right now, he's covered. He's getting pressure in his face by Kyle Smith. Ooh, ooh. That may be a replay situation right there, Mark. Looks like he's got one foot down right at the first down marker. Take one more look at it. That is a great effort by Stocko. There's the foot. No, he didn't have possession, though. That football was bobbling. t it. That should be <laughs> replayed, Mark. He did not have possession of that football. They're going to snap it. And Davis got snapped in the backfield. A controversial call. Mark, let's go back and look. I mean, I may be t in this one right here. Can I? I may stop this if I'm able to right here. Right now, keep your eye on his foot. The foot is in, but look, does he have possession? No. He is juggling that football right there. That was not a completion, Mark. I'm with you on that. I reserve the right to change my mind. Second down and 12. Owen Daniels in motion. High snap. And they blow up Stocko as a result in the backfield, way back at the 36. Antoine Rogers. Now it'll be third down and long, about 22 to go. And All right. right now on the fringe, of Mike Allen's field goal range as well. You just said it exactly like a coach, Mark. They were obviously in field goal position. Once again, Brock Spack on running down, likes to bring those secondary blitzers. That time he brought the corner from the boundary. Stocko holding up four fingers, indicating fourth quarter to come, and Kyle Orton looking for one more opportunity to get back on the field. Snap a little bit high, but Stocko took the safe route, took the hit, instead of trying to make a play. Back with the fourth period, right after this. Yao Ming stars in the NBA's Tour of China, tonight on ESPN. What were we thinking about when we gave the Kia Sedona a powerful standard engine? What were we thinking about when we gave it such a great warranty and priced it thousands less than our competitors? What were we thinking about when we designed it to get the government's highest safety rating? What were we thinking? We were thinking about Scotty, Nanny, Poppy, Uncle Larry, Derek, Eric, Dad, and Mr. Mophead. The always family-friendly Kia Sedona. Right now, get 2500 cash back on a Sedona. At CDW, account managers help you choose the IT products right for you. So we read a lot of product manuals. Open. They're great. My husband likes spy novels. But give me a modular access router manual any day. Then Mama Bear routes the frame directly to the switch port. I love the way this one ends. For the answers you need on the products you want, count on CDW for the right technology right away. Do you live it?
will you do in the air? NBA Live 2005 with Freestyle Air. Rated E for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. In the mood for something grilled? Stouffer's makes it easy with their succulent new grilled chicken entrees. A grilled herb rub chicken breast seared over an open flame to seal in its juices and served with tender linguine and a medley of crisp vegetables tossed in a light tomato herb sauce. As for your grill, put it on ice. Stouffer's new grilled herb chicken. One of four new grilled chicken entrees from Stouffer's. Michael? I need someone to work late tonight. I know it's after five, and I know you probably have plans. By the way, you uh, smell really good. Thank you. Introducing Red Zone Body Wash from Old Spice. With eight-hour scent technology, the great smell lasts all day, whether you want it to or not. Yeah, you do smell good. New Red Zone Body Wash. We're back under the lights at Ross Aid Stadium, a sellout crowd of 65,196 watching on homecoming weekend. This arguably the most important, the biggest game in decades at home for Purdue. They come in ranked number five in the nation, but right now need a stop on third and 22 against Wisconsin. Mark, right now would be a 52-yard field goal. What's the best play Wisconsin has to just gain back some yardage right here? Stocko down the middle, picked off. With blockers, it's Hall. George Hall, run down from behind at the 35 by Daniels. Mark, what everybody's one, been one to see, when John Stocko has to make a play, what does he do? Right here, again, we come with the corner blitz, and flat should not have been thrown. And that is George Hall, the middle linebacker, Mark, Good coming week. from deep free safety position, though. I mean, he was as deep as any linebacker I've seen, and he can run. I mean, that's 252 pounds, and Owen Daniels, great job of tracking him down from behind. That's Purdue's third interception on defense this season after the 44-yard return. It's first and 10 at Wisconsin's 36. Orton out of the shotgun. Looking for the out and up. Has double field. Incomplete and a flag down. Scott Starks, number two for Wisconsin, involved in that collision. Starks apparently running right through Ray Williams, number two, the intended receiver. Mark, no question that has to be called top on Scott Starks because the ball is underthrown. Ray Williams is trying to come back to the football, but you have to call him. Starks out of Hazelwood East in St. Louis, same school as Brandon Williams, his teammate. Mark, I think one of the most difficult things for a defensive back is when the ball is underthrown and the receiver comes back. Right here, that ball is underthrown, and you're going to see Ray Williams try to come back to the football, and Starks interference. First down and 10 after the penalty. Again, Charles Davis, Mark. There's Boyd on the carry. Boyd trying to get to the perimeter. Put his hat down at the 17 on Brett Bell. Second down and about eight to go. Mark, right here, again, as you see Ray Williams try to come back for the football, obviously that has to be called. If that ball would have been thrown on target or deep enough, Scott Starks would have been in great position, but because it was underthrown, he impeded Ray Williams' progress back to the football. Charles Davis not in the ball game right now. Actually, he is in the ball game on the right side of the offensive line. Davis a big factor in the last play. Orton wisely throws this one away. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. All right, Mark, thanks very much. Oklahoma State unbeaten on their home field, but now having all sorts of trouble with Texas A&M. Reggie McNeil from three yards out. They missed the extra point. Oklahoma State trails by 20 on their home field. Cal looking to bounce back from the USC game, up 14 to 6 on UCLA. Aaron Rodgers has a USC game last week, one of the more entertaining ones of the year. 
Third down and six for Orton. Well, if they can, will they double Taylor Stubblefield? Orton with all kinds of time. Into the end zone, Stubblefield, and it's through the end zone. We haven't seen Orton have that much time with the regular guys like James and Hawthorne and Welsh in the ball game. Mark, I agree. And what Kyle Orton wanted to do, he wanted to go to Stubblefield on the option route right here. Watch him break back out. Now, because Orton doesn't deliver, the scramble rule kicks in, and Taylor Stubblefield works up the field. But again, man-to-man -man coverage. Wisconsin, the ability and scheme to mix it up and play some man-to-man. -man. Ben Jones, the special teams player of the week in the Big Ten Conference, in for the 35-yard field goal. And he knocks it through to give Purdue a 10-7 lead. He is now 7 of 9 on the season. Purdue leading by a field goal when we return to ross -A. On the next i do anything 100 mile an hour heat is unleashed my hand is really sore took one in the hip took one in the head human curl strip and slide down the ice feel that burn yeah it burns all right and chasing tennis balls with nothing but neck when i was in the blimp it was scary being up there and it was scary looking down and seeing the ground i do anything presented by sony tuesday at 10 p.m on espn risking it all for this is my high-speed class. Okay, so then that's me, Mr. Webb. I'm teaching them all about Comcast high-speed internet. I'm used to dial-up. This is Robin. It's high-speed internet. It's scary. She's a little nervous, but she'll learn. That's Murph. He's just here for the fantasy sports. He's gonna be on the final. And Ricky here's a film student and video mail guru. So many faces, so easy to learn. Now, during Suzuki Quad Fair, you can get the most sought-after ATVs for an incredibly low $49 a month, plus your choice of a worn winch for $69.99 or $200 in Makita Power Tools. We're talking the fuel-injected King Quad, the automatic and manual drive Iger 400 and Vincent 500, the championship-winning Quad Sport Z400, and other select Suzuki ATVs. Hurry in. This offer won't last long. Suzuki, first on four wheels. See Nielsen Suzuki in Lake Villa, seven miles west of Great America. We're on the banks of the Wabash River here in West Lafayette, Indiana. Purdue taking a 10-7 lead on that 35-yard field goal by Ben Jones. Kyle Orton, well, it hasn't been pretty for him today. He's the Heisman front runner, but all that counts in the end is what's on the scoreboard. Goldsbury lighting up the crowd, number 44. One of these teams will not be unbeaten anymore after this game. There were 14 unbeaten teams in the nation when this day began. At the five-yard line, it's Williams. And Williams can be brought down at the 23, but there's a flag down at the 20-yard line. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. Hi, Mark. Boise State took a 21-7 lead on Tulsa thanks to a halfback option, but don't count the Golden Hurricanes out just yet. That's Ashlyn Davis from his own end zone, and Ashlyn's going to go untouched 100 yards. It's a seven-point game in Oklahoma, 21-13. All right, Matt, back here. We'll see how John Stocko responds after throwing that interception on the last series. And let's go back and look at that interception. Mark, this is going to be football 101 because I was trying to figure out what they did. I want you to watch George Hall right here, the linebacker. They're going to play too deep, but this is something you call the Tampa Bay cover two where the middle linebacker drops deep in the middle of that field and it almost ends up like three deep. That's the linebacker back there who intercepts that ball. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Monty Kiffin, Every college team in the country now calls it Tampa Bay cover two. You run that linebacker deep down the middle of the field. That drops back. Called the right play on that pick. Incomplete that time. Stocko to Darren Charles. It'll be second down and ten. Mark, I want to go back to this point. Wisconsin's football team definitely took a hit with the Erasmus James, Jonathan Welsh on that sidelines. Sometimes that shocks your football team a little bit. When you lose guys like that, and all of a sudden, this football team seems a little bit less confident right now, a little bit unraveled as this game progresses without those guys in the game. A couple of key cards defensively for them. Right now, it's up to their offense on second down and 10. 
Stocker working out of the shotgun. Gives it to Booker Stanley. Stanley's still in the ball game for Anthony Davis. Had been Davis most of the afternoon. Stocko, well, this is his time. John Stocko had a chance to speak with him recently. He said, hey, John, your, your squad is undefeated. You're the starting quarterback. What's it like walking around campus? He said that, uh, well, funny you would ask, Mark. In my life science class a little bit ago, a uh, professor was giving me a little shout out, a lot of love, getting a lot of high fives from students. Looking forward to this, the big game. And, well, if he wins, it'll be a different scene. If he loses, it'll be not as good up back on campus in Madison. Mark, see how he bounces back. The last ball he threw was intercepted. Stocko. Balls forward to the 23-yard line. Close to the first down. Brought down by Anthony Spencer. That'll be fourth down coming up for Barry Alvarez. Mark, this Anthony Spencer is a football player, number 49, right here at the bottom. Watch him redirect his steps and delivers a lick right here. He was the lineman of the year in Indiana High School football out of Fort Wayne, and he's been injured the last couple years. He's had some different injuries, but when he's, when he's healthy, he is really good. The Bush punting on fourth and one, standing on his own eight. Bruce Cunningham going to get an opportunity to return this from his own 30. Ran into his own man. Falls forward to the 36, lost the ball. They say he was down. It's Purdue ball. A 48-yard punt and six on the return. Ran right into his own teammate, number 22, Jerome Brooks. Sometimes you're not quite on the own frequency and can't get out of your own way. Purdue with the ball when we come back. Kodiak 450 Automatic 4x4 from Yamaha. Now get a $400 worn winch for just $69.95 on select models. Now every Wendy's Kids Meal comes with new choices. Choose mandarin oranges or fries. You can also choose cold, refreshing, low-fat chocolate milk or reduced-fat white milk instead of a soft drink. Wendy's Kids Meals. Now with new choices that make everyone happy. The Rock. Yeah, The Rock. What do you say we go one up on that rock over there? Yeah, yeah. yeah The Rock. It'll get you there. The rest is up to you. The largest, most powerful. Now, every Wendy's Kids Meal comes with new choices. Choose mandarin oranges or fries. You can also choose cold, refreshing, low-fat chocolate milk or reduced-fat white milk instead of a soft drink. Wendy's Kids Meals. Now with new choices that make everyone happy. Purdue first down in 10 with the ball. 10 to 7 leaders on the scoreboard with just under 12 minutes to go in the second half. Al Orton, the quarterback. 17 to 31 passing for 152 yards. One touchdown and one interception. Keep in mind that the Boilermaker offense has scored on its last two offensive possessions. Touchdown followed by a field goal. Starks involved in a pass interference in the end zone on the last series. Brandon Jones is the new tailback for Purdue. Here he is on the carry. Gaping hole for Jones. Out to the 44. One of the big stories in the ball game. Their injuries up front on the defensive line for Wisconsin. Welsh was hurt on that play, Jonathan Welsh. He went out early, and then Erasmus James hurt on that chop block by Charles Davis. Tried to come back in, 
played for a couple of plays and then had to come back out. And it is very unlikely that he will return for the rest of the night. Hawthorne was also injured, but he since has returned. Second down and one on the top. Jones with the first down beyond the 45 to the 46. Starks making the stop. Again, Purdue going on the quick count. Run the toss sweep, a good play to run on a quick count, but this is not that different for Joe Tiller running the football. I look back in 1999, Mark, he threw the football 68% of the time for the season. In, oh, in 2000, he threw it 63% of the time. Last year, he only threw it 43% of the time. So he has been running the football more later in his career here at Purdue. First down and 10, it's Jones as they run it again. And Finding success down to the 46 of Wisconsin. Got about seven on that chunk. Take a look at the Yamaha game track. Anthony Davis breaks through to put Wisconsin on the board first. It was 7-0 at that point. He has since become the 10th leading rusher in conference history. Horton to Davis. Dr. Chop block with the touchdown catch. And then the defense, the big pick that time by George Hall, the middle linebacker, a 44-yard return on the interception to set up the field goal, and it's 10 to 7. Second down and two. Jones spinning forward for the first down at the 43-yard line. Jim Leonard making the stop. Brandon Jones, Mark, the guy that has four career 100-yard game, games. And it's kind of odd right now. You see Purdue huddling up, taking their time, using the clock a little bit, running the football. But I think you've seen the evolution of Joe Tiller's offense during his time here at Purdue. I mean, they are capable of lining up and running the football now because overall they have more talented players. Here they mix it up and go empty, bunch formation. Bob with 11 second half first down. A different looking offense from the first half. Open, stubble field, first down at the 22-yard line. Orton says, how do you like me now? You can't keep the genie in the bottle for long. And Mark, this corner route is an excellent call. You're going to watch Stubblefield come out of the punch and run a corner route against cover two, and there's a lot of space up here to throw the football. This is an excellent call out of the punch formation. Watch him break right there to the corner. In behind the corner, outside the safety. That is a well-designed play against two deep covers. First down and 10 as a result. The toss and the reverse to Williams. Williams knocked out of bounds at the 14. Ray Williams using his speed. And there's about six on the play. Second down and four. Purdue getting creative, Mark, in the running game. At that time, they come with the reverse to Ray Williams. Right there, Jimmy Leonard may have been hitting the back a little bit on that block. You see Kyle Ingram out in the open field, kind of like a pinball. Gets one block, but gets blocked himself. Here's Jones between the tackles. Down to the 10-yard line and near a first down. He's going to get a good spot. And this is going to set up first and goal for the Boilermakers. Jones nodding his head. Bielema looking for the right call to slow this offense, which here in the second half has gained a lot of momentum. Mark, and all of a sudden, you look at if Purdue can score, and it's a 17-7 game. Wisconsin's offense that's really been struggling, can they come back and score 10 points? So this is a huge series right here for the Wisconsin defense. Hold Purdue to three points, make it a one touchdown, one score game, Mark, because Wisconsin's not capable of scoring a lot of points. They run the toss into the boundary. Jones still on his feet. And Jones down to the seven yard line. What would Barry Alvarez do to have Erasmus James back in the ball game along with Jonathan Welsh? Alvarez's team 6-0 coming in, 3-0 undefeated in conference play. Mark, right now for the football game, Purdue's run 63 plays, 31 runs, and 32 pass. So, balanced by necessity in this football game for Purdue. Hawthorne trying to hold it down in the middle, number 77 for the Badgers. Second down in goal. 
Orton. They're trying to do it himself. Strike the pose. Kyle Orton. Oh, that is not the same kid athletically that I stood on this field four years ago coaching my last game against. He has come so far in his development as a scrambler. Purdue rallying with 16 unanswered points after trailing 7-0. And now 17 unanswered points. That was the first rushing touchdown allowed by Wisconsin's defense this season. Kyle Orton says, you guys know about my arm, but you don't know about these feet. Kyle Orton, styling, profiling, high-stepping into the end zone, giving his team a 10-point lead when we come back to Ross A. you were an attorney, Mr. Johnson, I would not have made that lawyer joke. More refined, more impressive. The redesigned Camry XLE. Now that's moving you forward. Stuart Scott and the gang recap the NFL weekend and get you ready for Monday Night Football on Monday Night Countdown, presented by UPS. 7.30 Eastern on... It's the Red Zone Body Wash Presidential Election. Vote November 2nd for your Red Zone Body Wash President. Get clean, smell great all day. And enter now at OldSpice.com for a chance to win a trip to Hawaii. Michael, I, I need someone to work late tonight. By the way, you uh, smell really good. Thank you. Introducing Red Zone Body Wash from Old Spice. The great smell lasts all day. Yeah, you do smell good. This woman bought her three-piece designer suit at K&G for just $99.99. At a department store, she would have paid twice as much. So what'll she buy with the money she saved? K&G has incredible savings on a wide range of fashions, seven days a week. K&G Fashion Superstore. For men, for women, for less. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday Primetime. Brought to you by Wendy's Chicken Temptations. It's better here. And Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's moving forward. Purdue with the lead 17 to 7. Kyle Orton running it in on the last possession to give his team that 10 point margin. The emotions flowing freely down on the field right now on both sides of the field an interesting exchange on the Badger sidelines a few moments ago as Purdue kicks off down to the three it's Williams and Williams pushed out of bounds at the 26 yard line during the last commercial here's what it looked like on the Wisconsin side Erasmus James out of this game right now because of an injured ankle Looking at Jamal Cooper, pumping him up. Mark, as long as that's done in a positive way, that's a huge positive. I mean, that's a Ras Rasmus James, a leader on this football team over there. But no question the tempo of this football game changed when Erasmus James and Jonathan Welsh, who left the football game in the first half, went out. We're due in the midst of a 17 to nothing run. And now we're going to find out about young John Stocko, Mark. First down and 10. Stocko to Williams. Williams turns it upfield out to the 43-yard line, and Wisconsin has to work quickly with 7.48 to go. Mark, you want to see how you beat Tampa Bay cover two? Watch right here, the middle linebackers. We let this roll. Right here, I want you to watch Hall, the middle linebacker, run out of there. That vacates 
Look at this huge crevice in the middle of that football field now. So if you're going to run that linebacker out of there, that deep, throw the football underneath on that crossing line. Booker Stanley in is the only tailback. Stocko over the middle completes it down to the 39-yard line to Darren Charles with 7.27 to go. Bob, interesting that Booker Stanley has been in for most of the plays here in the second half. You have to wonder about the health of Anthony Davis. Mark, I think you bring up a great point because no way would Booker Stanley, in my opinion, be in there two straight series like that if something was not bothering Anthony Davis. But how about young John Stocko stepping up, Mark? And Darren Charles has become the go-to receiver on this football team the last two weeks. Yeah, 16-yard pickup followed by an 18-yard pickup right there by Charles. First down and 10. Pressure coming. Stocko steps up and dropped by Kyle Smith. Should have been picked off. Kyle Smith had it in his arm. Mark, you see the young quarterback. This time, Brock Spock's going to come with the corner five. They end up with one-on-one -on -one coverage with the safety and Darren Charles. This football should have been thrown on the outside right here. Look at Darren Charles. He throws the football, overthrows down the middle of the field, Mark. He had Darren Charles. Look out there on the outside of that football field, wide open. Smith certainly wants that one back. Second down and 10 for Stocko out of the shotgun. Blitz coming off the edge again. They pick it up. And it's Williams underneath again. Williams doing work down to the 17-yard line. First and 10, under seven minutes to go. And Wisconsin threatening now on the 23-yard pickup by Brandon Williams. And, and Stocko has found something. Wisconsin's found something, Mark, on these little underneath crossing routes. Purdue brings the strong safety blitz. They get the little high-low, and Brandon Williams again. And Purdue right now, a tired-looking defense, particularly George Hall, number 30. Oh, got him back on their heels a little bit. First down and 10. Stocko. Pass complete. At the 13-yard line, that's Brandon White. Pass complete to Brandon White. White out of Florida. Three junior makes the catch with 6.25 to go in the fourth quarter. Wisconsin trying to stay unbeaten at 6-0 coming in. Purdue also trying to stay unbeaten. They were 5-0 coming in. Neither team has lost in Big Ten Conference play. Obviously, Mark, you see Perry Alvarez looking up at that clock. I think a great point. I mean, that is not Anthony Davis back there in the backfield. This is John Stocko's show right now, Mark. Stocko. Completes it to Williams. Williams has been his main man and main target. It's going to be first down and goal to go for Wisconsin with 5.56 to go. Again on the crossing route for Stocko. Brandon Williams uh, missed spring with a leg operation, but has certainly recovered now and looking good on this drive, Bob. Mark, you're right. And the clock, in my opinion, becomes a bit of a factor right now. As we go down to five minutes and 40 seconds left in this game, you see Anthony Davis over there in the sidelines. Mark, something is definitely wrong. Got to be. Stocko underneath the Booker Stanley. Stanley. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Wow. John Stocko marches his team to the beat down the field. And now Wisconsin with a good extra point to follow, could be within a field goal. Mark, was that Purdue on offense? It just it looked like all the length looked of the like field, they throwing it every down. Who would have thought? Looked like they switched jerseys there for a second. The Stocko goes to the sideline. Allen in for the extra point. It's a 17 to 14 game as Wisconsin puts a tourniquet on the bleeding and stops that 17 to nothing run by Purdue. Mark, that was an impressive drive. Barry Alvarez now part of Air Wisconsin. <laughs> and you have to love Stocko coming back on the previous series. He had thrown an interception. Booker Stanley on the reception. Filling in for Anthony Davis. This is his moment with his first career touchdown reception. 
last time on Dream Job, the prompter went down. The pats are presently on purpose. You were bad. Brian Sartari, you've been cut. This week, no rest for the final six. Dream Job, midnight Eastern, 9 Pacific, Tuesday on ESPN. Taco Bell's Zesty Chicken Border Bowl is made right when you order it, so it tastes even better. Grilled all-white meat chicken, hot steaming rice, cool crisp lettuce, and fiesta salsa. For a freshly prepared meal, think outside the bun. Yeah, we're going to take the rock, right? The rock. The Rock. Yeah, The Rock. What do you say we go one up on that rock over there? Yeah, yeah. yeah The Rock. It'll get you there. The rest is up to you. The largest, most powerful forerunner yet. Get ready for the biggest event. It's one of many tornadoes. In 10,000 years. What do we do? I will come for you. The day after tomorrow. Own it on DVD today. This is the real thing. Phil Fulmer and David Cutliffe might like to have Mannings at their disposal. They'll go with their got in the rivalry that has divided families since 1902 at the top of the hour. Welcome back, everyone, to Ross H. Stadium. Over 65,000 on homecoming weekend watching Purdue lead by a tenuous three points. Kyle Orton set to take the field after the kickoff. Can he answer that six of seven passing performance by his counterpart, John Stockwell, on the last Wisconsin drive? There's a look at Orton's numbers on the day. Jerome Brooks back deep, standing on his own five-yard line for the Boilermakers. And Mark, this is a talented Jerome Brooks, this returner right here for Purdue. Taylor Meloff to kick off. Kicking into the wind. At the two, it's Brooks. Brooks bottled up at the 17-yard line. Where it'll be first down and 10. And don't forget last week, Phil former Tennessee Volunteers knocked off Georgia in a huge upset. And this weekend, they take on Ole Miss. All football Saturday primetime on ESPN2. Tonight at 9 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Eric Ainge holding it down, looking impressive at quarterback last week for the Volunteers. But Tennessee, blown out at home by Auburn. Strange. Goes to Georgia. That's almost as strange as Wisconsin's offense struggling so much here in the second half. Can't make a first down. All of a sudden, they throw the football and go the length of the field, Mark. Eric Ainge, one of the talented freshmen. Anthony Davis watching from the sideline. It was Booker Stanley in on the last drive at tailback. First down and 10 for Kyle Orton in Purdue. Pass complete to Hera. And speaking of Anthony Davis, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Look, I was able to ask a member of the Wisconsin training staff if anything was wrong with Anthony Davis. He said, no, not that I know of. I saw him then walk over to Anthony and say, hey, man, are you okay? Anthony shook his head like everything's fine. He's got his gloves on. He's got his helmet. Looks like he's ready to play. And, guys, as far as we can tell here, nothing wrong with Anthony Davis. All right, Holly, thank you. And second down and four. Orton slides in at the 25. It'll set up a third down and about three to go. Kyle Orton has done a lot scrambling using his legs and not his arm today. Ran for a touchdown from 18 yards out earlier in this quarter. Mark, I think we really do have to call him at Brett Bielema, the new defensive coordinator from Wisconsin. I mean, bottom line, this is a much, much improved Wisconsin defense over what we saw a year ago. Obviously, they've got good players, but I think he's done a great job scheme-wise, and he's definitely kept Purdue, made it hard on Purdue. They've worked for everything they've got tonight. Bielema has had some good mentors, as I mentioned. Kirk Ferentz at Iowa, Snyder at Kansas State, and now Coach Alvarez here at Wisconsin. Purdue calling a timeout. Both teams with a couple remaining, and the chess game intensifies on the sidelines. We'll be back with the finish right after this. Kyle Orton standing and 
reaching a crossroads in his Heisman campaign. Today is the day, as the song just sang, and there's a look at his numbers, 19 to 33, a touchdown and a pick. Mark, he's always looked for Taylor Stubblefield in these kind of situations. They do have a lot more balance, but it's man-to-man -man coverage. Scott Starks on Taylor Stubblefield down here at the bottom. Horton calls his own number, lunging, and he got the first down at the 29-yard line. Dialed up his own play. Mark, that is unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> and the reason I say that, four years ago, no way did you ever think about defending quarterback draw against Kyle Orton, a.k.a. Drew Brees now, doing it all, running out of that shotgun, Mark. A little shake in the hole to set himself free, first down and 10. And now that makes the clock a huge factor, that first down. Wisconsin with two timeouts remaining. Handed off to Boyd, and Boyd is brought down at the line of scrimmage to 29 by Hawthorne and Jamal Cooper. If you're just joining us, keep in mind that Erasmus James was knocked out of this game in the second quarter. Now on the sidelines, James, a big part of that Badger defense, had a couple of sacks before he was forced you to leave. No, he's licking his chops, Mark, because they don't block Jamal Cooper on this play. Or at least, maybe they tried to block him, but they couldn't block him. A little Matador defense and offense on that one. That's right. Block. And right now you have to think that Barry Alvarez will call timeout after this play. Toss sweep to Boyd. Has a blocker out in front of him. Boyd with a nice run out to the 38-yard line. It will set up a third down and about two to go. Crooks made the stop on defense for Wisconsin. And Barry Alvarez signal, signaling for that timeout after the nine-yard gain. So they've got one remaining. Purdue has two. This is a huge two-week stretch for Kyle Orton and Purdue. Wisconsin tonight, followed by Michigan next week. Mark, you're exactly right, and it's not going to get any easier for Purdue because Michigan, in my opinion, the most improving, if not the most improved football team in the country with the freshman quarterback and the freshman tailback, and their defense will lock on you now. Let's go back to the studio and Matt Weiner. Mark, coming up in just a few moments' time, Tennessee and Ole Miss. The Rebels have to worry about the two quarterbacks. Don't forget about the running backs. Riggs and Houston combined for more than 800 yards already. And uh, we're told that uh, Peyton and Eli Manning both expected to be at that football game down there. And I'll tell you what, Kyle Orton reminds me a lot of Peyton Manning. Says he watches them a lot. You know, he picked up the whole thing with the dummy signals, the fake hand signals from Peyton Manning, the way he manages the clock. And I'll tell you one thing he has. He has that gun. He can flat throw the football. In, in my opinion, Kyle Orton is a sure top 10 or 15 draft pick in the NFL market. It was interesting to see the young man deal with all the distractions of the Heisman campaign. I mentioned I went to one of his classes, watched him do a 10-minute presentation that was pretty smooth, and then you think about all he has been through. You mentioned it earlier, Bob, and how two years ago as a sophomore, suffered a concussion in his game, lost his starting job, came back, and ended up the MVP of their Sun Bowl victory. Third down and three, looking to hang on to the ball in possession. Orton dials up his own number again. Orton put it on the ground. It's still live. Wisconsin ball starts. What a turnaround. A cataclysmic turn of events. Touchdown Badger starts. Mark, obviously, we're going to look at this again. Obviously, it's reviewable, and that's why we have instant replay in the Big Ten. Let's go ahead and look at it right away. He comes out on a naked boot. Great call. Put the ball away, though, Cal. Put the ball away right there. He puts the ball in the wrong hand. It was loose. That Bob. ball was loose. That's a fumble. And Mark, he had the football in the wrong hand. That ball should be out here. Rob, that's out. Robert That's a fumble, Mark. Robert Brooks made the big hit on Orton. Starks was there to pick it up, and he had a convoy of blockers. Davis almost got him. And, Mark, if we go back and look at that again, is there a fine line between winning and losing? Obviously, everyone in this stadium is waiting to look at the replay. That ball was out. He did not have the possession of that football on the way down. The official talking to the technical advisor. They are getting word 
as to the result of this play. Let's look at it again. First mistake, he puts the ball in the left hand as he's getting inside out. Well, That's out, Mark. Yeah. That's a fumble. Starks actually... That's going that way. It's a touchdown. I'm going to help him out in the replay booth right now. Starks actually made the hit, Bob, right there, lowering his shoulder. And Brooks came in to jar it loose. It's a touchdown, Wisconsin. So Kyle Orton and Purdue looked as if they had the first down on the call on the bootleg. It would have kept the clock running and them in possession instead starts pleading with the heavens saying thanks. And let me make this point, Mark. There's two minutes and 36 seconds left in this football game, Scott Starks. You have to go back and play defense right now. This football game is not over, but what an unbelievable Mark turn of events. With 2.36 to go, Starks got the loose ball Ran it in from 40 yards out. High snap. That's big. And it's blocked. It's still a field goal. They can return this. Pollard got in there and blocked it. And now the margin is just three points. It's not four. That is huge. That has big consequences. Bernard Pollard blocked the extra point. Last week, we were on ESPN Classic, right? Yeah. The first time ever ESPN Classic did a live game. This game tonight is going to come down and be a classic. Kyle Orton, Bob, being encouraged on the sidelines. Maybe that would have been his Heisman drive. Mark, let's look again from the right side of the screen. A great block right there. Bernard Pollard, number 31. Watch, he leaps over the blocker and just smothers that thing in the chest. But Mark, let's set the stage. Two undefeated football teams. And let's go back. All those people out there that say, come up with little nitpick reasons why we don't want replay in the Big Ten. Aren't you right. glad right now we have instant replay? That's a defining moment for the advancement of the cause of technical no advisors question. and replays. As I start to say, Kyle Orton on the sidelines right now. He's going to get another chance. He might have had his Heisman moment destroyed on that last fumble return for a touchdown, but he will get one more opportunity to salvage not only the game, but perhaps the Heisman. 2.36 to go. And Mark, once again, it comes down to maybe one of the nation's best offenses, definitely the nation's best defense right now statistically. No off kickoff comes down to the one, and it's fumbled there by Brooks. And Brooks is brought down inside the 20 at the 13-yard line. Mark, and that's the second time Jerome Brooks has caught that football like a wide receiver. The first time he had an excellent return, that time he didn't. Normally the deep returner gets deeper than the ball, catches it going forward, he catches it in his chest a little bit more. So obviously poor field position right now for Purdue. Kyle Lorton back onto the field. As a freshman, he got lit up many times. As a sophomore, he lost his job and came back. As a junior, he made his mark, and now as a senior, looking for that indelible imprint with perhaps a comeback victory. They hand it off to Jones, and Jones is out to the 23-yard line for two with two timeouts remaining and 2.22 on the clock. And right now, Mark, Erasmus James and Jonathan Welsh on the sidelines. Joe Monty and Jamal Cooper, the two young defensive ends in the game. Horton looking to the sidelines, now over the middle. Using up valuable time. And wisely throws it away in the direction of Ray Williams. Keep in mind that Purdue has a very good place kicker in Ben Jones. But they have to get him in field goal range. Last week, he kicked a 50-yarder against the Buckeyes. Pardon me, against Penn State. And they also have two timeouts, and they also have marked the wind at their back. There's a look at Jones on the sidelines. Made one from 50 last week against Penn State. Good career numbers. Missed one from 51 last week, but it bounced off the upright. He had plenty of legs. Third down and one. They need to convert here. Oh, it's going to be close. Not sure they got it. Kevin Barrett inside one of those fill-ins. Mark, it looks like they made it right here. Obviously, it all depends on the spot. I mean, it's going to be close. I think they made it. There was Gerard Boyd on the run. And they're going to measure. What's hard right now for Purdue is 
calling the next play, Mark. You're obviously going to wait and see what this measurement is, but they don't want to use a timeout right here unless it is fourth and one. Oh, they made it. First down and 10, albeit at just the 24-yard line. Boyd dinged up a little bit on that last run. It's been a game of attrition. And Mark see Gerard Boyd up in there, but we have Taylor Stubblefield, the all-time Big Ten receptions leader. We have Kyle Lord, the potential Heisman Trophy winner. Start running the clock, 153 and counting. Horton underneath to Williams. It's going to be ruled complete. Starks made the stop. He was almost better off dropping that one yeah. from the time standpoint. Yeah. Horton drilled that in. 136 to go. Pass complete to Ingram. Has a first down at the 38-yard line and 130 to go. Orton barking out the call. Mark no Erasmus James in the game. Let's go back. Number 90, maybe the best pass rusher in the country on the sidelines right now. That changes the dynamics of this game right now. Where is Taylor Stubblefield? We should hear from him at some point. Orton fires a little bit high, incomplete. It was intended for Stubblefield. And Wisconsin, Mark, playing a lot of too deep zone coverage right now. Bob, the one thing you really notice about the passing game of Purdue today, they have not been able to throw the ball downfield at all. Exactly, Mark. Don't forget, number 14, Tennessee against Ole Miss coming up next. Rasmus James watching anxiously from the sidelines. Out of the game as a result of an injury. Second and ten for the Boilermakers from their own 37. Horton. It's going to be ruled incomplete. Intended for Bryant. LeVon Rowan pushed him out of bounds. get a chance to see on the sidelines over here once again the freshman wide receiver Dorian Bryant excellent protection again for Kyle Bryant Kyle Orton. oh he had a foot in oh, it didn't look like he was in he had a foot in bounds now is this being reviewed it'll be reviewed that's the beauty of the Big Ten Mark don't lose confidence in the system they should reverse this one when it's reviewed the bottom line, if you get it right, time really shouldn't be a consideration. Mark, let's look at it again, slow it down. He has possession, he has a foot in bounds. Obviously, right here, he has a better angle, but to me, he was looking down at the feet of the receiver. Obviously, his feet were in bounds. The only question is, did he have possession? I think it's a catch. Is this our instant replay guy down there? Huh? That's our guy right there. He's making there, a call. Right? Watch right here. Here's a better angle to look at it. The Mark. foot is down. He's got the ball, he has too. possession, Mark. we got to see where they mark this one if they indeed rule it complete. I mean, that's close. out near midfield. And that moves the ball a little bit more into field goal range for Purdue. Is under review from the technical advisor. Mark, I mean, that is really close. Kyle Orton, the Heisman Trophy contender, perhaps the front runner, trying to salvage that. And Mark, how that rule is written, obviously, it has to be indisputable evidence that he did catch it and have possession and get one foot down. That's a close call. Again, it looked to me he has possession, he does have a foot down. Dorian Bryant, I the freshman. A catch. Yep. I'm still trying to see exactly where he was on the field. It was out near midfield at about the 47-yard line. Not only do they have to make the ruling, they got to spot the ball and spot it in the proper place. We've seen that be problematic in the past. I think the key thing is indisputable evidence. After review, there's indisputable video evidence that it was a catch. The ball will be placed on the 46-yard line, third down. 46-yard line. There you go. So they advance it. I mean, this is what you call indisputable, I guess. Right there, he... The right foot is down. That's a catch. I think that's a good call. And that much closer 
to field goal range for Ben Jones, the place kicker. Third down and two. They've got to get to the 48. And the beauty, Mark Purdue has not used a timeout. They still have two timeouts with a minute 18 left. Orton working out of the shotgun. Incomplete intended for Stubblefield. It hasn't been their day. Stubblefield had to twist around to make the catch. It'll be fourth and two. You have to credit Brett Bell, the outstanding corner from Wisconsin. I mean, he's done a good job on Taylor Stubblefield. Purdue is three of five on fourth down conversions this season. And this is the ball game for them. They want to give Ben Jones an opportunity to let it fly. Mark, I don't think it'll be quarterback draw or bootleg here. He's going to throw this football. Last time in this situation, he fumbled. Orton has to throw it, and he does. First down at the 45. Bryant with the catch. And Mark, no need to use a timeout right here if you're Purdue. The clock stops in college football with a first down. And how about the legs again of Kyle Orton? And the young freshman receiver. That's a freshman out there. Dorian Bryant has made the last two receptions for them. Now a timeout call. That's a good timeout right there by Wisconsin, Mark. I think an excellent timeout because there's a tendency if you're Wisconsin, when the opponent converts, when Purdue converts on fourth down, that you may let down a little bit. And I think an excellent use of timeout right there by Brett Bielema. Don't forget, folks, Tennessee, number 14 in the country, taking on Ole Miss. That's coming up next as Eric Gange leads the offensive of volunteers which has been hot in the last couple of games this game was a three-point game last year and after wisconsin tied it on this jim leonard punt return the big ten's all-time leader in punt return yardage with a big one here to tie the game up but orton marched them downfield and ray williams made a big catch in that drive set up the game-winning field goal from 18 yards out by Ben Jones. Will we see a repeat? Keep in mind that the last three contests in this series, actually the last four games between these two teams, has been decided by less than six points. And one of them went into overtime. And Mark, Wisconsin still with two timeouts left. They had two timeouts when they started this drive. They had not had to use one. They have the whole toolbox as far as plays. Draw is not a bad play right here. Shuffle pass to the running back is not a bad play. So they can do it all because they still have two timeouts. On first down and 10 from Wisconsin's 45, Kyle Orton. Over the middle, incomplete. He was looking at Stubblefield the entire way, but Brett Bell was right there with him. It'll be second down and 10 with 104 to go. Again, Mark, they doubled Taylor Stubblefield again. Watch Jim Leonard and Brett Bell. They're inside outside on him with two defenders. I'm surprised that Kyle Orton would continue to go to him right there. But once again, that's Kyle Orton's safety net. Taylor Stubblefield, they've been together a long time. Had a little bit of recent success with the freshman Dorian Bryant, too. Mark, with only five in that box, a run is not a bad call now. Pass instead, Orton. Complete to Bryant. There's the freshman with another key grab down to the 38-yard line. He'll be about four yards short of the first down. He was working on rowing. And the clock stops with 53 seconds to go. Still more or less on the fringe of field goal range for Ben Jones, but he will have a slight wind at his back. Wisconsin out of timeouts. Purdue with one remaining. And Mark, this is two-down territory in my opinion right here third down and four uh, from right here it would be a 56 yard field goal i think uh, for ben jones he has plenty of leg ben jones is the big 10 special teams player of the week last year against wisconsin he kicked four field goals today he has one had a career day last year against the badgers says he loves kicking under the intense spotlight especially on the road albeit he has the help of having the home fans with them tonight. Mark, on this third down, if Purdue does throw the football, I know they want to go to Taylor Stubblefield, all-time Big Ten career receiving leader as far as reception, but he probably will get double covered right here. So Kyle Ingram, the freshman Dorian Bryant, become factors in this situation because they have been doubling Taylor 
stubble for him. You think Orton tries to run it again himself? I don't think much. My only question is, do you run it if you're Purdue because you know you're going to come back on fourth down and go for it? I think they'll probably throw the football. Third down and three. Orton on the quick slant. Complete. First down at the 22-yard line. Ingram working on Rowan. Mark that six foot eight on that slant. But how about Kyle Orton throwing that thing in there? Now if you're Purdue, be aggressive, but also protect that football, Mark. A Heisman moment for quarterback Kyle Orton. And Mark, let's go back to the block. He had blocked extra point by Bernard Pollard right now. It's a three-point game, not a four-point game, which is huge. A little malfunction, Bob, at the junction with the tra chain. Barry's chewing on those guys over there, too. He's chewing a little bit at the chain, guys. Giving Purdue a little bit of time. Look, I mean, you know how tough that is? That's like taking Christmas lights off the Christmas tree. <laughs> and like your wife over there. Just watching. Just you. hollering. Flail away. And, you know, that's a tough enough job, Barry. Let the guy go, man. <laughs> First and ten. Purdue with a timeout remaining. And Owe for that extra point to have that one over again. Visiting team has won the last three times in a row in this series. Purdue looking to snap that trend tonight. Under the lights in front of a sellout crowd on homecoming. Wisconsin does an excellent job, Mark, of stripping the football. So if you're Purdue, protect the football. Orton on the out and up. Bryant couldn't squeeze it. Knocked away nicely by Chucky Cowens defending on the play. And Mark, you have Chucky Cowens locked on the freshman. Dorian Bryant. Excellent coverage by Cowens. Wow, Mark, that football hit Bryant. Should have been cut. It, it did, no question. Hit Bryant in the hands. Can't fault the young freshman too much, though. He's made two key catches for first downs on this drive. This is the 14th play of the Purdue drive. And Orton going to take a sack back at the 25, which hurts them just a little bit. Going to be third down and about 14 to go. They've got to get down to the 12 for the first down. At first, Bob, they may have had the option of thinking perhaps touchdown, but now perhaps more just a field goal. Exactly, Mark. And Purdue uses their last timeout. Ben Jones, the transfer from Butler, came to Purdue a couple of years ago. As I mentioned, the special teams co-player of the week in the conference last year had four field goals, four field goals against Wisconsin in that victory. And on his career, he is 11 for 11 from that distance where he'd be kicking if they didn't advance the ball. And one thing really important, obviously, with 32 seconds, Purdue no timeouts. The good news, they have plenty of time if they do not convert a first down or if the football does not go out of bounds or any clock stoppage, they can get their field goal team out there in time to kick the foot, to kick the field goal. And Ben Jones has already made one from 35 yards today. And this game, folks, if you just joined us, took an amazing turn with about two and a half minutes to go. Kyle Orton trying to convert on a first down, fumbled the ball when he was hit, and Starks ran it into the end zone with a go-ahead score for the Badgers, but Purdue has marched it back to the 25 of the Badgers. Mark, it's man-free coverage against empty, so it's man-to-man -man coverage on those slots. Third and 13, incomplete. He threw it behind Hara, and it'll be fourth down. In comes a defining moment for Ben Jones as they all attempt the field goal. Jones has already made one tonight from 35. One thing you don't think about much, Villarreal, the defensive tackle, is the deep snapper. Kyle Smith, the strong safety, is the holder. Both those guys, Mark, been over on that sidelines for a while. Ben Jones from 42 yards out for the tie. To remain perfect on the season, he pushed it to the right. And the Badgers escape one. Ben Jones 
missing and failing to capitalize on a golden opportunity. That's the first miss of his career from between 40 and 49 yards at a very inauspicious time. And now all Wisconsin has to do is kill a little bit of clock. Four times, folks, the visitor, barring a miracle comeback, will have won in this series. Mark, Four times in a row. There's a fine line between 7-0 and oh, Wisconsin going home tonight very happy and the misery that this Purdue football team and Joe Tiller feels. And now perhaps the Badgers have a leg up on the Rose Bowl. Next week they play Northwestern. You'll see that game on ESPN at noon. Rose Bowl on their minds. And right now we're going to go to Tennessee and Ole Miss with Sean McDonough. So long, guys.